So certainly another uh, very impressive victory for you tonight, sir. I guess uh, you know you've you know probably still reflecting on it a little bit. But how do you feel about your performance overall? Performance was dog shit. Victory was amazing. Uh, mental strength was weak this week. <laughs> um, nah, uh, it was good, man. It was good. You know, I, I feel uh, I feel really good. Uh, I don't feel surprised. I told you I was better than him everywhere. I told everybody that, and. Um, I was. I was better than him everywhere. I think I pretty much dominated besides when he kicked me in the calf and it hit my freaking nerve. <laughs> well, that's the thing is that you're saying it was a terrible performance, but yet it did seem like you dominated everywhere. And I thought maybe it was a mature performance that was kind of patience. Uh, but what, what, what did you think? Like, what, what did you hate about it? Uh, I wanted to knock him out, but you know what? Uh, he really did bust up my leg. Uh, it literally hit, like, the other three didn't do anything. And then the one, it hit the nerve, and I was like, ah. So then I heard my coaches say, go for the shot. And I was like, bet, I got it. I get in deep on shots. I know how to wrestle. And uh, his coaches made a critical error when I was in their corner. And I had the, the uh, almost like a Von flu. And I was waiting for him to let go of my head. I heard them say, let go of the head, start to work to get up. And I was like, bet, you're going to sleep, buddy. And I felt him tap, and I didn't. But if you look, he, like, he did like a bunch of little. So if I would have let go, that probably would have been a bad decision, right? So I wouldn't let him go. Fuck out of here. <laughs> sleep, sleep, boy. You, you were emotional on the microphone afterwards, and, you, and you're saying now it was kind of a mentally weak performance. I guess, what can you say? About, I mean, I know there's, there's like fear, and I mean, that's just normal in this game, but I guess like what, what, what was it especially about this week? John, I don't know, man. I got out here, brother, and uh, I went to the Red Rocks, and like I, I don't like I tried to relax, but I couldn't, and uh, I was nervous. You know, I respected this man. I worked my ass off, I was, and I had a – uh, up and down. I had MRSA. I had, uh, I split my toes open. Like I was sick. I, dude, I had everything that could go wrong, go wrong. It just kept interrupting me by like a week at a time. So, um, you know, I think that was just anxiety and nerves. And, and then on top of it, it was like, you know, dealing with, I can't even say the co-main spot cause it didn't bother me, but just dealing with that guy that I thought disrespected me. Um, and I was like, you think, you think, you know, I, all right, here's what it is. I was really pissed off. You got USA versus Africa. That's how I look at it. Right. And I see all these, I said something about Americans not supporting their own people. I see all these Americans like saying, I'm going to get knocked the fuck out and all this shit. And it's like, oh, oh, all right. But you guys are cheering for somebody who like prides himself and talking about Africa and everything, but you guys won't support the kid that's sitting here walking out with the flag the fuck out of here so i had to put him to sleep well done pissed me off <laughs> uh dana was here just before you and he said as far as your call for a new contract he agrees he said actually he already went and started talking to you about it feels like y'all are in a, in a good spot so what can you say in, in terms of uh sounds like maybe there's almost a new deal in place yeah man so uh you know i went in the back and i talked to him and i always thank him you know what i mean i'm forever grateful for uh he gave me a place to live <clears throat> um he afforded me a place to live, basically. And, uh, yeah, you know, I, I think I'm deserving of it. I, I came in here, man. Like, I, I, I finished everybody since, I, the content, since my comeback from my massive surgery. I finished everybody. So it's like, I deserve it. You know what I mean? I talk my shit. I come up here. I say what I – I take the risk in talking shit with facts, and then I go out there and I back it up, right? Despite everything I had going on, I still go out there and I perform. And I think you guys see, there, there's a, I, got, I got potential, brother. I, I'm still only 27 years old. My frustration with the, what I didn't like was I, one of these things said that Joe Pfeiffer's unhappy with his contract or he won't fight top 15 unless he gets it. I'm just saying, if you want me to fight the tough guys, I respect these men. Um, and they're all, they're all tough. They're the best in the world. But just let me fight for the, some of the money that's the best in the world. You know what I mean? I just, I just don't want to, I don't want to be guaranteed less than, a certain amount if I lost, you know, by taking a chance, that's all, so. Last question, and I think that was similar to what Sean O'Malley said before, right? He's like, if you want me to fight the top, pay me like the top guy and I'll fight it. So I guess I just want to ask you, if the money is right and, and, the, and that money is there, do you feel like you're ready to fight ranked opponents? I mean, you do have time on your side, but I mean, you know, if the money's right, is it time to get into the rankings or is it still like, let's slow play, we're developing a little bit? Um. I mean, it's whatever the UFC is going to offer, you know. If I'm comfortable with it, I'll do it. If I'm not comfortable with it, I'll talk to my team. Um, I'm still maturing. I'm still 27 years old. <clears throat> One thing I don't want to do is get myself so far up the ladder to where I can't keep growing because now I have to keep fighting. And I'm fighting guys that maybe I'm not ready for. You know, in my mind, I could beat any man. 
in my coach's mind, their job is to say, hey, sit down, shut the fuck up, let's work on this, 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 and this. And uh, you know what, man, here's, here, here's what I will say. And I don't care if people take it as weakness or whatever. If I have such a hard time mentally, you know, moving into a fight like this, maybe I'm not ready for the top 10, but I'm ready to, I'm, I'm definitely in the top 20. So let me, let me work my way up, that's all. You know, let me build my brand, that's what I'm doing, right? Body bags, B. Joe Pfeiffer. I came out here, I talked my shit, I said it confidently, I fought confidently. I don't think you guys seem like an immature fighter out there making bad decisions and whatnot, you know? And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm ready for anybody, but my whole team has to be in agreement. Hey, Joe, right here. Although uh, you said that you didn't feel like you were mentally ready or mentally right for this fight, that it didn't go the way you did, that it went, yet you just signed a new contract, you got performance of the night. I did not sign a new contract. Oh, sorry. Excuse me. You're offering a new contract and everything like that. Got the performance of the night for you. Obviously, you don't want to get too far ahead. But honestly, to yourself, what do you think that ceiling is for you for your potential? Isn't that the whole point of what I'm doing, right? You know what I mean? I, I want to know what that limit is. I, do, <laughs> I don't know if I could be a world champion. I believe it. That's all I'm going off of. You know what I mean? That's, that's the honest truth. I wouldn't sit here and, and, and one thing I don't want to do is just bullshit people. I don't want to do these fucking interviews if I'm going to have to lie. Um, I'm going to try and find that out, brother. I want to see what my limit is, and that's the whole point of why I did this, because I started this back to what I told John about you got to listen to that gut feeling, that heart, and that mind, the unexplainable. But you could, you could say that there's something about me that is supposed not meant to be average. That's all I could say. So I just I don't know what that ceiling is, brother, and I'm going you know, to test it against the best athletes in the world. And like I said, I think I've gotten better at letting go of the result of winning and whatever God's plan is for me, um, then I'll turn the page to that. When you train and you, and you dig deep and you sit at home at night and you think about everything and you reflect upon yourself, what do you think does set yourself apart, that ick factor about you? My intention. I think, uh, I think my intentions are true. I think my personality is something that you either love or you hate, but you can get behind if you understand the message. Um, I talk a lot, which is a fucking good thing. Uh, and I'll run my mouth because I believe what I say. And uh, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I think my superstar power is huge. And I don't remember your fucking question, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> I want to be, uh, I want to be a superstar, brother. I, I can handle this shit. And then lastly, for me, obviously, we, we were just discussing before, as John was kind of alluding to, about what what's next for you. Do you have a specific name in mind that you're like, okay, I've been thinking about this. If I got this fight, one in this way, you got the submission. Do you have a specific name? You're like, okay, I want them next. Uh, I mean, I really didn't. I really wanted to fight Paul Craig, and then he got booked with my buddy uh, Brendan Allen, so that that was kind of sad. And then Derek Brunson got cut, or whatever the hell happened with that. Uh, and then I think Andre Muniz has a fight. You know, I think any of those two that are still active, I think that would be good. You know, I, I need to. I talked to Dana too. I got to go get some injuries. You know, that's what I was upset about too. You got to imagine in my head, I'm coming in here. I got a bunch of shit going on with my health, and um, yeah, I need to take some time and relax. So let's let's see how that uh, that Paul Craig guy does um, against Brendan Allen. I think he's gonna get his ass whooped, but I'd like to fight him after he gets his ass whooped. All right, heal up and uh, congrats on the win tonight. Thank you, Joe over here. Tonight was your first submission victory since 2019. Is this kind of like a sign, an alert to the rest of the division, like, oh, this guy could do it all? Yeah, I said that. Then, you know, well, I don't know if I saw you, but yeah, I'm a complete fighter. This is what I said leading into this. This guy was not complete. This guy is a one-trick pony. Big kicks, big overhands, no jab. Did, I don't even think he fucking throw a jab. Do you? I, I don't think he did. And uh, you know, I knew he either he he plays this game of in and out, and he's very explosive, so you can get away with it sometimes. Uh, and he, he, he has a little bit of like a intimidation thing, like, oh, watch his power. But bro, I hit harder than him. And I've said before, not in this interview, I'm one of the hardest hitting middleweights in this division. That's a fact. And people will see. I didn't catch him really that clean, but even the ones that I was grazing him with, I could see like he like he was like looking at me like cross-eyed a little bit. So. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't find it, and then he did a good job investing in the calf because of his coaches. So props to them on their coaching, and uh, yeah, it was a good fight. Oh, yeah, I can fucking sub people. What's up? <laughs> That's awesome. And uh, with the UFC going back to new places now, I mean, have you talked? Philadelphia, come to fucking Philadelphia. 
Andre Petrowski, Sean Brady, Jeremiah Wells, Pat Sabatini, my ugly ass, fucking, uh, yeah, Paul Felder, his return maybe, right? Put us on a fucking Philly card, man. I, <laughs> I won't be depressed, and I'll probably have the best showing of my life. I was depressed. Vegas stinks, bro. It's fucking dry as shit. There's, you see a bird out here? <laughs> There's no wildlife up to this bitch, bro. They're here. They're here. <laughs> Bro, I see one bird here. I was like, where the fuck is the wildlife? I felt like I was like in a bombed area that just is deserted. That's really where all this fucking mental shit came from. I'm dead serious. I was so upset. I don't know why. I was about to cry. I didn't even need to finish my question. You answered it there without me finishing it. But So now that you're kind of, you know, putting some shit on Vegas, so if they were to offer you a fight at the T-Mobile Arena, what's, what's, the, offer, what's the answer from Joe Pfeiffer? I'd do it. <laughs> I'd do it, you know, like, you got, look, you, you, don't, you don't always do the things that you like, but, you know, you, you do them because you have to. It's your duty. It's your, it's your responsibility, you know, and uh, on a serious note of people that I love and I care about, you know, I wouldn't be here without my team. So I just want to say a couple thank yous to Vayner Sports, Disruptive with Alex Davis. Um, I want to say thank you to my coaches, Jonathan Webb, John Marquez, Sammy Orpiza. Um, and Sean Brady, hope you get better. He was supposed to be out here. Unfortunately, he uh, was a little bit sick. So, um, and uh, yeah, man, I'm, I'm just, I'm happy to be here. I'm fortunate to be here. I'm super happy. And every time I win, I win for my team, you know, and I'm leading the way. I brought one of my teammates out here, Jose Soto. Um, I'm leading the way for young kids um, as an inspiration, not as a role model, but trying to give them the things that I want to someone to give me and I didn't. And then, uh, you know, I, I, I got people like Will Harmon, my wrestling coach from high school, they took me in and gave me this foundation. I'm here because of Will Harmon, first and foremost, for a place to live for four years while I pursued this before I, my first contender series fight. And then uh, I picked up that big bifocal glasses wearing ass, Sam Morpisa <laughs> in the beginning of my career. So I just want to say thank you to them. I know that doesn't go along with you guys' question, but you guys got to understand, every time I win here, man, it's a blessing. This shit doesn't last forever. This feeling doesn't last forever. And that's, that's what we're addicted to, this feeling of victory. Awesome. And uh, last one for me, you did mention Sean Brady. You said earlier this week that we should expect a new Sean Brady come his next fight. What can we expect out of Sean Brady? Listen, man, I'm, I'm 220 pounds outside of camp. Well, and I'm not fat either. I've never felt a human being that strong when he actually gets a hold of you. So I just think he wasn't in the right spot mentally, and I don't think the best Sean Brady has ever come to fruition yet. Um, I just think the Sean Brady that had never lost just kept going as that. And um, you know what? I have high expectations for him. And uh, what you can expect is tune in to whatever the fuck that card is and watch. <laughs> I don't know. But, yeah, I think he's going to dominate Kelvin. I think, he's, I think if Kelvin gets caught, like gets put on his back, it's over. Thank you, congratulations. Thank you. After you won, you, you took a moment in there to kind of speak, right, straight ahead, to speak to, the, I guess, the kids out there and people out there. How important was that for you to have that moment to give some motivation and give some words of positivity to people out there? Yeah, uh, it, it's, it's a huge part of why I'm doing what I'm doing. You know, this, this is for those kids that didn't have voices. This is for those kids that don't know what to do. They don't know where to go, who to turn to. And, 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 and my advice to them is, Figure out what you like, what you love, what you're willing to get up at any hour of the day to be better at and chase that and don't stop. And even if it looks like there's a roadblock after roadblock after roadblock, you're always going to have problems. It's just how you roll with the new ones, right? So it's like stay with it. I, through anything traumatic in my life, I never abandoned MMA. And I'm not anybody special. I'm just somebody that never gave up. And that's why I'm here. You know, I outworked Abdul leading up to this fight despite all the obstacles I had. That's why I won. And last thing, I guess it's more of a comment. It sounded like you thought that Abdul tried giving like these little pitter patter hits at the end once you got him in the arm triangle choke. After watching, I think when you go back, I think and maybe it's just a credit to how strong that is. It looked like he was trying to tap, but he couldn't work out to tap with his hands that he actually strikes. And that's why the ref didn't stop it because it wasn't a open hand tap because it has to be extended to right. be a tap. And that's why he actually got slept. So Damn. Now, when you think about that happening, is that just a credit to how strong and how quick that that choke actually is for you? Yeah, if it's going to make me sound more yoked up, let's go. You know what I mean? I yoked this shit up. What's up? Like, I just, listen, my coach, Jonathan Webb, my jiu-jitsu coach, I knew 
if I, first of all, you saw me try to go for it and standing. I thought I would be strong enough to like muscle him the fuck down, like whip him down and put them put him in that head and arm triangle. But uh, he's a strong boy, strong, strong, and uh, you know he's an old head, so he's 38 years old. They got that old man strength, you know what I mean? So I knew he was going to be real strong at first, and uh, yeah, I mean, listen, I'm I'm a strong guy in that position. That's my that's one of my favorite submissions. So I uh, I think his corner just. Gave him the wrong advice, unfortunately, and uh, I, I capitalized on it. But you know what? Respect to Abdul as much as he didn't want to shake my hand and treated the UFC staff poorly, in my opinion. Um, you know, lose with grace, win with grace. I wasn't that graceful. I was talking a lot of shit, but I still shook your hand, and I still said I respect the man, you know? The guy is dangerous. And then how happy were you to finally get that moment at the end? He just wanted to cheer on USA with the flag on your back. Oh, man, I've been wanting that. You got to remember, right? I, I'm like in the top 20 or something like that, I assume, or whatever it is. I, I don't know. But to be able to walk out with the flag, man, like I'm one of the top 20 in the world athletes in an organization that says they have the best in the world, right? So I consider myself that. I'll, it'll stroke my ego. And I get to walk out and represent USA. And I just beat Africa. It means a lot to me, you know? Um, and for all those people that bet against me, there's a special someone that bet against me, that went, that went sour. I, and they literally told someone I'm close with, fuck you, I hope you lost all your fucking money, bitch. So, yeah, yeah. Bro, someone I was close with said that shit to me. So, I, I just popped in my head, I don't know why. Sorry for being vulgar, but I had to say it, just so they, just so they know, doubt me. So, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, USA, baby, let's go. <laughs> Congrats on the victory. Thank you. Quick one for me. Um, <clears throat> Andre Pavrovsky stepped up on short notice. Fight. Yeah, Michigan. my boy. <laughs> How do you see that fight going? Oh, man, I love Andre Pavrovsky. I've been training with him for 10 years. He does things his own way. He goes to the beat of his own drum. And for that, I salute him. And uh, I wish him the best. And I might stay out here, you know, just to support him. We'll see. Uh, or fly home real quick and then come back out. You know, I want him to do well. I want him to be able to provide for his daughter. And, uh, I mean, listen, the kid's got balls. 5-0 in the UFC. You know, this is his biggest test if, if this goes through, and you know, which I think it did. Um, and uh, my heart goes out for him, and I hope he's able to come up here and talk to you guys and come away with a victory and not get hurt, you know. As he's a part of my team. I want him to do well. Congrats. Thank you. Peace. <laughs>